All right. Um, so we have reached the appointed hour and looks like we have a quorum. So I will call the meeting to order. This is the Northampton Conservation uh, Commission meeting for the 19th of August, 2021. Standard opening statement, the commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and the duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meet, meetings, dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Uh, today's agenda includes a public hearing for a notice of intent for a gravel walking path within the riverfront land subject to flooding along the Mill River uh, in Leeds, uh, a certificate of a request for a certificate of compliance, and an executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. Uh, let's see, we also had some minutes that you sent out. Sarah, um, uh, although the meeting was delayed and it was a while back, I think they, I forget the date. They're uh, March 11th. Uh huh. I remember they looked accurate to me. Anybody uh, want to make a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. And, oh. uh, and a second. second. <laughs> okay. Um, any amendments, modifications? No, they look fine. If not all in favor, Sarah, you need a uh, roll call? We do. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you. All right. So we'll um, ask first if there's any general public comment not having to do with a specific case. If not, uh, we'll go to the first hearing, notice of intent for the gravel walking path along the Mill River in Leeds. Um, who's gonna be speaking to that? I will, Kevin. So uh, Wayne Fyden, Director of Planning Sustainability. Sarah, can you give me third, the ability to share my screen? Absolutely. Um, so just sort of some context of the screen I wanna show you. So you all know we've been talking with, with strong Conservation Commission approval about creating this trail someday, the Northampton one that connects a lot of different conservation areas together. Um, and so, and we have a $50,000 grant which is helping us start the work for that. So what you see, I need to stress this, this is really important. This is conceptual only. This is like one possible route. The solid red is one possible route. Now what's clear is we only own about 60% of the land on this route. So lots of things are gonna change as we go forward in the process. We just needed a conceptual so we could think about different routes. So we began by saying, well, we think this is the ventral Northampton one. It may have to change based on where we can actually acquire land in the gaps. But for this $50,000 grant, which we received, we've identified four general areas which we're doing work, which we think, again, this isn't even certain, but we think regardless of how we buy land in the future, that these are the areas that Northampton one will actually go through. So everything outside the purple box is sort of our best guess, but depending on land, the area in the purple box is the thing we think works. So within these areas, and they, even within these areas, the trails aren't exact, but within these areas, we've started putting up Northampton One signs. So if you work on a lot of these trails, you're gonna see the signs out there. Um, again, it's heavily aspirational, um, but we wanna start, you know, this may be a 10 year build out, if not longer, but we wanna start the messaging. So in these areas in purple, wherever the reds are, we're beginning to put in these the, the Northampton one signs. And then in these areas, we're beginning to look at opportunities to harden existing trails, right? So these are a priority. You know, we have miles of trails. Some people use the trails are experts and some are not and get lost. And so these are the areas that become sort of the, the best marked, best maintained trails. And so you're gonna hear from other these areas as we go forward, as we apply for other wetlands. The property we're dealing with today is right here where my cursor is. So 
This is having the trail come across the Stallman Hills Greenway at Roberts Hill. Um, the reason for this timing is you all probably know there's a bridge, hotel bridge, which has been unpassable for years, but the mayor allocated and city council approved funding to redo the deck on the bridge. It will not be open to cars, but to redo it for bicycles and pedestrians. So that suddenly makes an opportunity. So the idea is we have the trail through Roberts Hill. We could use a little bit of Water Street. We cross the hotel bridge. And then we cross the small conservation land, the Leeds Greenway and Main Street, and we go up to the bike path. And then on the bike path, we just follow the bike path up to where we get to Beaver Brook. So that's sort of the conceptual piece. Um, if, you go, if you went to the property today, you'd see sort of a faint trail, which we has been there for a while and we refresh by cutting back some of the brush recently. Um, we wanna bring in gravel to this area. Um, basically to make it more solid, easier to maintain, because again, the idea of the Northampton one is that's the easiest of all the trails we have. Um, there's a portion of the trail, a substantial amount of this, which goes up a steep hill to the bike path. That's, people have been walking up that for years. It's never been a city blessed trail, but there is a trail, but we don't have a right of way through there. So National Grid owns the property. We have a right of way for the bike path. The bike path is about 10 feet wide, and we took, I believe it's a 20 foot right of way. Um, so we own the bike path, we own a sliver where you can connect, the guardrail up there is within that right of way. But that area is not part of the work. Then there's a small section, we'd be crossing a little intermittent stream. That's not part of the work either. We'd be coming back to you later if and when we do that. So this is basically the flat section of land, it's within the riverfront area. Um, and so we basically would bring in trap rock gravel or some sort of, of gravel on the area that's already clear. So you, you can walk it today. Um, we have a contractor who's ready to do the work if you guys are comfortable with and, and we issue a permit. The only background I want to give you is this used to be an old mill um, site and we have spent a lot of time and a lot of money since we acquired this property about a decade ago cleaning up the, the property, everything from removing a junk card to removing literally thousands of pounds of bricks um, and pieces of metal on the surface. Um, we have taken out substantially more material than the gravel that we're bringing in. So we think we've been cleaning up the site and we think there's no net increase in the amount of material we include it. So that's for the background, the rest is questions for you all. Wayne, was this uh, taken for non-payment of taxes back a decade or eight, eight or 10 years ago? That's correct. So it was back taxes. It was the Tacey family, yeah. Gene Tacey and other Tacey's, and they deeded us, they gave us a deed in lieu of back taxes. Questions? We, Go ahead. This is just the Wait, bottom section. This is not the yeah, yeah, it's not the slope coming down from the... That's correct. That's within the National Grid right-of-way that we would have to get a new easement to do, to do anything. Okay. Again, people are walking, so you can walk there today, but we're not really making improvements in someone else's property. Would there be some sort of a fence or guardrail similar to the bike path just to keep people from wandering off, off the trail? No, we're not. I mean, you know, the, the trail is relatively... The area where the trail is going is flat until you get to the riverbank, and the riverbank is steep but not dangerously so. So we're fine with people wandering off the trail if they want. This trying to match the aerial photo with the uh, topo map, um, which at least on my screen was a little hard to uh, read the lettering that in, in, in the descriptions, but I suspect that that was uh, part of Jason's question. It looks like there's some pretty steep banks right in there and I'm not quite sure how near the path those are. Yeah, it's definitely steep, but it's, I mean, having, personally cleaned up a lot of the bricks and metal on the bank. 
it's not steep as in you die walking down, it's steep and you hold onto a tree and you might slip and fall on your rear end, but not, we're not so close. So we're gonna be close, if you, if you go on the trail now, we didn't wanna to be too close to the parking lot. So the property to the north is a privately owned property, but there's some protection from the hill. I mean, you know, certainly like, if you think about our bike paths we have around town, as long as we have a four foot buffer along a bike path, we're fine if we're on a steep hill within our, without a fence, we only put a fence that's steeper. Other questions from commissioners? Sarah, there was, a, a, I was um, struck by, oh, I always think of the uh, limited project uh, regulatory constraints as those that are in the Wetlands Act. And this is river associated uh, with the same characterization. It's, it, it's uh, also referred to as a, a limited project. So in, at least as I understand it in, in the Wetlands Act, um, the, uh, there isn't an allowance for pedestrian and bike paths, but in the at Rivers Act there is? Correct. Uh, okay. So the, the commission can permit this notwithstanding most of the performance right. standard requirements. Right. And that, that goes the, for the local wetlands ordinance as well. Did you go over your response to DEP and where the plantings are going to be? Uh, so DEP had suggested just to increase regulatory compliance, even though it's not strictly required because it is a limited project, um, that we add some plantings for the uh, amount of disturbance proposed within riverfront that's also within boring land subject to flooding. And there's no gravel proposed in that area, but it is some vegetation removal. So 160 square feet of plantings can be added somewhere on the property. Uh, we'll have to do some work to figure out where that would make the most sense and have the most impact. Uh, but that can be demonstrated when we come back for a certificate of compliance. So we're going to look at the area either with the worst concentrations and vases to remove that, or it was this old tank that we inherited on the property that we sort of filled with gravel many years ago, and there was an old pickup truck that we removed. You know, those might be logical areas, but we haven't figured out exactly what's the best spot. Other questions from commissioners? Uh, uh, any questions from the public? I see some hands raised there, okay. Kevin, or a couple okay. of folks. Uh, yes, uh, Gabby. Folks. Um, just a couple point of clarifications, Wayne, if I'm understanding you right, you're pretty much hardening an existing goat path. That that's, that's correct. I mean, it was sort of a, it was a, frankly, it was never trail the city built, but it was, we we're hardening an existing trail that people were using. Going and, and you're just making it more navigable and more maintainable. That's so it's correct. no, no net change to current usage. That's correct. Uh, and then I guess my, my second question um, is, uh, is this the end of the city's plans relating to trail creation or connectivity between Hotel Bridge and the bike path in, the, in, in this immediate area? Does this, does this yeah, close so the, the book on yeah. interventions at that site? No. Um, we would so there's two issues. One is we'd certainly like to build a trail on the national grid property, but we need to get easements from them. This is a more fundamental issue. We need to look at all of national grids, railroad rights away, and sort of clean up some of those things. So we'd like to do it, you know, we'd like to formalize the trail that comes up to the hill. There's a guardrail right in the bike path. We probably would want to take down one section of guardrail and do a connection. Then the bigger issue of do we ever actually build a bike path? I, I think that's years off. We had a Smith College class look at it, I don't know, six years ago, somewhere thereabouts. And our feeling at the time is if you're on a bicycle, going up to Florence Street and coming around is two seconds. So it doesn't matter if it's you're on foot, it matters more. I think we want to get a sense of 
desire lines? Like, you know, what, what are people's patterns? We took a series of projects, I think four different projects to our bicycle and pedestrian committee for feedback. And it's not that they didn't like this by any means, but they identified the other three as higher priorities. So the Rocky Hill Greenway, the Connecticut River Greenway and the uh, State Hospital uh, multi-use trail. So it shows up in our trail master plan is something we should think about. So we're still not getting rid of that, but we're not spending money on it right now. So it's back burner for a few years. Okay, thanks a lot. And Penny Geis. So you're mute, muted. There. So a similar, I want to be clear this, I thought from reading the agenda that this was going to connect with the bike path. This is not connecting with the bike path. So the actual work we're doing is not Penny, it's just on the flat section. We hope people use it and we are happy for volunteers to do it, but we can't, what volunteers do is different than the city does. The city can't formally bless doing work on someone else's property. So we can't do anything National Grid's property. So that, I was over there today looking down to see, and indeed as someone on the commission noticed, that is a very steep grade going down from the bike path. And the study that you worked with the Smith people in 2014, 2015, um, we appreciated that you involved us, the Lead Civic Association in that. And so it was kind of strange to be, just happened upon someone posting on Nextdoor that they had seen the sign at the bottom. There's no sign on the bike path, just the one down at Marnie Electric. And that was the way I found out about the meeting, just somebody walked by the sign. So that was concerning that we didn't get a heads up that this was going on. And it is so different from the study that was done that included erosion and that was handicapped accessible and was good for bicycles as well as, as pedestrians. Um, this seems to be none of that. And so that's been a concern around the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you're absolutely right. That's sort of the, well, I mean, first of all, I think Tom from my office spoke to Jason. So hopefully we did share with Leaves. Um, but in any case, yes, that's, you know, that's uh, it's still in our books as something of long-term, but no immediate piece. We just, you know, we don't have the resources to do everything so we have to prioritize our paths. And so we want to see how it gets used. Um, you know, what, what, what's the demand there? So I guess we don't have an official position on it because this is kind of the first we're finding out about it. Okay. Will the uh, slope be handicapped accessible that goes up to the bike path when that part's done? So that's the part that Smith College students designed. And yes, they showed it as being handicapped accessible. It is a very big ticket item. And $90,000. So was that? $90,000, I think. Was there. Yeah, but I will in, say the students were probably, I think they did really good work. I have less faith in the cost estimating. We went to bid once for the an equivalent design at the back of Look Park, and the bids came in much, much higher than that kind of thing. So I... I don't really know what the real costs would be by the time we got there. So Mason, if we did a bike path, yes, would have to be. Yeah. Um, if we did a simple walking trail, it doesn't have to be. So that that's sort of the conversation. You know, do you do, it would need something to stabilize, but do a series of water bars and a series of steps with volunteer labor. You know, So if you're not using federal money or state money and you're doing volunteers, it doesn't have to be accessible. And that becomes a budget thing, one of the priorities and desires. And George, you had your hand up. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everybody. Sorry, I came into the meeting a little bit late. Um, was there any kind of drawing, Wayne, that you provided to the commission that folks looked at? 
So we really just have sketches. You know, we have the old work the Smith students did in 2000, whatever it was. Someone here said 14, I can't remember exactly the year. Um, and then really just sketches going through there. So then if I understand correctly, there's going to be a, uh, a path, a gravel path at grade level from Main Street into the old, uh, into the old property next to um, the Marnies. And then it's going to kind of dead end at the grade, at the pitch going up to the bike path. Well, in terms of the gravel that we're doing, there is a rough trail that goes up the hill, very, very steep, as people know, but you know, doable for people who want to do that stuff. For a while ago, we had a similar situation at the the line at Haydenville, which was uh, uh, quite was referred to as the goat trail. Um, that was kind of expanded on and it was improved a little bit by volunteers. I don't think it necessitated the same kind of switch back. Um, is that something that could be done by volunteer work? I mean, now that GO trail has been vastly improved. It's a great bicycles can get up and down. I don't know if it's ADA accessible, um, but we could look, could we look at doing something like that here with volunteer labor? So I hope so. The city can't bless property, can't bless property, work on other people's property that we don't have an easement to. So that's National Grid's property. We have, in essence, a 20-foot wide easement. So path is 10 feet, about five feet on each side of that. So either unsanctioned, and I'm not involved, or sanctioned if we eventually get a right of way from National Grid. Um, one more question. If we were to get a right away from National Grid, is there any way we could dovetail some of the expenses with the, uh, the renovation of the hotel bridge? And I don't know if that money has been identified and captured yet, or if the application is still going forward from our DPW, but is there any way to tie those two together in terms of construction and uh, expenses? I suspect not for two reasons. I haven't been involved with Hotel Bridge, but I think the money DPW got from the mayor and city council matched their estimates for the work. So I don't think there's extra money left. And National Grid is a slow process. So the Edward Square off-ramp that we did last year, we initially hoped to do that close to a decade ago. And we we're doing it. So a big issue with National Grid, and we're not trying to hide this at all, is the amount of insurance that they insist we carry. And the city mayor and city council have to make a decision at some point, are we going to take an easement by eminent domain? Because the insurance that they require us to carry isn't, is very expensive. Okay. Uh, and so it becomes an unfriendly process and we like not doing, but so I don't think it could happen that quickly. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Wayne, this is Jason. Just another quick question. I recognize the intent of this is to you know kind of temporarily improve an existing path that folks are using but by doing an improvement like that on city property that leads to the private property grid owns is there any potential liability with the city essentially escorting people onto that private property so grid doesn't post their property and state law gives them an obligation if they want to leave people out they have every right to do it but absent them doing it they're covered by the recreation liability statute and people can walk on the property and grids um, liability is you know, virtually zero. Um, they are very, very cautious because they're not eligible for recreation liability statute in areas where they have active power lines. You, know, you climb an active power line and die, they don't get to claim recreation liability. But they don't seem to be particularly concerned. We have a lot of places, we have trails at, at Roberts Hill coming off Water Street we have a trail that's on Grid's property. Um, as I say, they don't, they don't really seem to be concerned and it's, it would be obligations and them do something different. And we're not concerned, again, from a recreation liability statute standpoint, that we're not worried about liability. I saw another head, uh, Jim Ryan. You're muted. He's still muted. Uh, Mr. Ryan, I can hear you speaking, but you're muted.
don't seem to be able to get unmuted. Um, I guess we'll move on and see if he can uh, correct his sound. Um, so any other questions? Can you hear me now? Ah, there you are. Yes. Yeah, okay, my computer just asked me if I wanted to be unmuted. The, the problem that I see with this, I mean, it's very fine that you're going along a level path to where the intermittent brook is that dumps into the Mill River. Why are we, if you want to go up the rest of the path, it has a steep slope going up and then it goes down to the little gully then up another steep slope. It also is slanted towards the river. So if we're ever going to try and make this accessible to bikes and everything else, we're talking about putting in walls and everything else. It, 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 it's a job that would probably go up into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's, it's, it's nothing there. If you come down from the bike path walking and I walk it with my dog, I let my dog get, go off the leash there because I'm not gonna let him pull me down the hill because I'm gonna go tumbling. It, it doesn't make any sense to put a path that goes in from Main Street between two trees that no one has ever seen. I didn't know it was there until I saw the public notice sign. I mean, if somebody went in, bushwhacked a path and you can walk along it very easily, but then once you hit that intermittent brook, which has a huge tree stump across it, you have to go around that, then you start the climb, the climb slopes off to you if you're going off, off to your right. And it's almost impossible. It's not a safe place to even have people walking. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And if, if you're gonna say they, if they wanna walk down from the bike trail to the new hotel bridge, I, I, I can't see that new hotel bridge being an, an attraction like the uh, Glacial Potholes or the Shelburne Falls Bridge of Flowers. I mean, this bridge is going to be redone. You're going to be able to walk across it. Are you going to invite bicyclists to all of a sudden take the ride down there? They fall off. They're tumbling down that hill. And now we have a problem with the fire department trying to get people out of there. It doesn't make a lot of common sense to me at all. Thank you. Thank you. So you raise good points. Let me just try to address those. So you're absolutely right. You know, again, making improvements for bicycles is not what we're talking about now and that's years from now if ever and we'd have to see are there desire lines do people want it and do we think we could get money i think you're right it's certainly a six-figure improvement we have you know we have 20 or 30 or 40 miles of walking trails um they serve a different audience so the idea is to do walking trails this is the part of the work we can do which is eligible for the grant that we have and that we can do based on our current right of way. We have looked at that hillside and we can certainly make it safe. George was talking about sort of improvements. It's you know too steep now, but putting in steps, putting in water bars would be not a huge project if we could do it. So we could connect. It's not what we're talking about in 2021, but I hope we are talking about that in 2022, 2023. And it is one of the best ways to get, you know, if, if we're trying to get a continuous path, it's probably the best way to get from Roberts Hill to Beaver Brook. So that's why the connection becomes so important. Using Hotel Bridge, which is desirable and coming this way. So yes, you're right, needs more work to get there. No, we're not trying to do bicycles. Mr. Ryan, last comment? Yeah, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. If people are coming along the bike trail, they're going to ride straight out to Florence Street. They're not going to be going down that, I, I don't even call it a path. If you go up on Roberts Hill, which is off of Dimmick Street, you can see the bikes that go in there, they're riding up and down. And that to me is basically a hiking trail. Bikes are going to try and go down this. If they're going to be going along, hey, go out to Florence Street. If you want to ride around, come back down, fine. Go to the hotel bridge go your 200 feet into the intermittent brook and then come back out. It seems like a waste of time and money at this point. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I walk it with my dog. I take my dog off the leash because he's not going to pull me down and he's a well-trained dog. It, it, it just, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Wayne, I, um, this, 
raises for me the question that I, I, I realize I'm operating on the assumption that for the 10, 12 years that I've been on the commission, I forget exactly, um, you come along periodically with pieces that, uh, with, that might connect to an eventual puzzle. Um, and sometimes that's an acquisition, sometimes it's uh, some improvements. Um, this, I'm, I'm, when I read this application, I was assuming, okay, this is a piece, not of uh, something that's likely to turn into a bike path, but part of this imagined Northampton one walking path, hiking path uh, uh, that we've talked about different pieces of around the city over the years. And that you have some funding that can be used for this particular purpose at this moment. Um, and is that accurate? Am I making the right assumption here that this is a piece of a puzzle and um, it'll be uh, like other pieces, maybe years before it actually connects to other pieces of the puzzle, but it's not a bike path intention. It's part of this 20 roughly uh, 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 marathon length uh, walking or running path around the city. That's exactly right. That's why I began with this context. So yes, think of this as being what seems like little orphan pieces now that eventually fit together. And Northampton one is not primarily a bike path. There'd be sections of it that are safe for bicycling and mountain biking and sections that use the existing bike path and many sections that are not appropriate for bicycling because of slope or wetlands or other criteria. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I think that context is is helpful. Our, our purview on the commission is not um, uh, whether it's safe, but whether it's congruent with the Wetlands Act and the Wetlands Ordinance and the Rivers Act, and, and those uh, have to be our considerations. Um, any, any other comments before we close the hearing? Um, I just had one. When I, when I first looked at the application, I thought it was for the whole works, the whole, whole connection on down. Um, I'm kind of, uh, you know, on holding here. Um, but where's the commitment? So, so it's in the text, Mason. It's basically saying it's about 150 feet of, of gravel we're talking about. Yeah, right. Uh, Nelson Miori has a hand up. And you're muted. Thank, thank you. Go. Yeah, I just, I missed, I came in a few minutes late. Did you talk about the maintenance of this trail? Do, is there funding? Is it the city, I assume, is going to maintain this? Um, and what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, so we have a half-time position who maintains our conservation land. We could certainly use a lot more than a half-time position, but this would be part of it. One of the appeals of gravel is it is a lower, it's more capital cost up front, but it's a lower maintenance cost going forward. And, and like everywhere else, we get, you know, we use volunteers as often as we can, but we're not, you know, this is not a high maintenance cost for doing. And I'm sure, you know, we're probably not going to cut back brush as quickly as we'd like. And so I'm sure it's going to go over again sometime, but it fits in, you know, all the trails that we have around us. And just a follow up, um, Director Biden. So, for to maintain gravel, do you have to like put down more gravel each year, or I'm trying to picture what this looks like in terms of maintenance? Does it just look good the first time you put it down and then it disperses? It will slowly sink, but it should be good for 20 years. Um, what will happen over time? It's not even some, I mean, you, we could do nothing and add gravel, and it's still going to be a more solid base than if it wasn't gravel. The first year, no vegetation is going to grow up. As it sinks into the soil, you know, some plants will come up roots, so it becomes a somewhat, you know, you're going to have dealing with vegetation is there, but it's still a lower maintenance surface. We, you know, we have conservation areas that gravel trails that were added either by previous owners or that we have that are, uh, Rocky Hill Greenway is a good example. We took over a golf course and there's certainly vegetation growing up between the gravel, but it's a lower, it's easier to maintain and still more solid footwork in the areas that don't have gravel. Thank you. All right, can I uh, get a motion to close the hearing? Uh, Kevin, there's also, a, there's a couple other hands raised as well. Uh, oh, really? The list. Uh, oh, Kara, oh, okay. Yep. Uh, Karen Nelson. Hi, um, I have just a general comment than a question. Um, 
I'm concerned because this project is going to open up an area that most people don't know really exists and is going to expose more riverfront to erosion and pollution and abuse that we in Leeds have been struggling with for the past five, six summers. Um, and the city is not able to manage the existing traffic and pollution and safety and noise issues that we are having in other parts of the village. Um, so why would we intentionally add to that burden by opening up more riverfront? Um, I think it's really naive to think that people are just gonna use this as a walking trail. They're gonna use it as an access point to get to the river, to barbecue for the day, to swim all day. Um, and um, I emailed this to Sarah earlier, but in the mayor's June 28th statement um, on the summer recreation in Leeds, um, you'll see the extensive efforts that the LCA is already undertaking, especially around trash removal, um, but it also states the limitations that the city departments are taking. Um, planning, public health, public works, fire, police. Um, for instance, the fire and rescue are not gonna respond to cooking fires. Um, and just this past week, weekend, there were several cooking fires on the river, not this section of the river, but other parts. And again, it's naive to think that people are just gonna use this as a walking trail to go, oh, there's the river, Look, it looks pretty. Let's hang out here for a few minutes. People are gonna use this as a new access point to the river. And I am really against that. And um, until there's a better plan in place, and I know there's the whole feasibility study about swimming areas and that going on, until there's a better plan in place, I don't think it's a good idea to be opening up more riverfront areas. Um, and also, in terms of this, I know this is not part of this discussion, but in terms of this little spur being part of the one trail, um, it's as being a connector from Beaver Brook to Roberts Hill, it seems like if you're using this as a connector, you're intentionally cutting off the historical part of Leeds Village. And I thought the intention of the one trail was to not only connect recreational and conservation areas, but also cultural and historical parts of the city. Um, and instead of this path and then the eventual spur from the bike trail, if we improved existing infrastructure, existing sidewalk, adding a, a bike lane on Main Street, did some wayfinding, um, there are other alternatives to get from Beaver Brook to Roberts Hill via the Hotel Bridge without extensive land clearing and path building and then you know, adding maintenance costs, adding future capital costs. It just seems like an extensive cost and abuse of the land when other alternatives are available. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's Two other hands that I see, uh, Jody Lakoff. Hi there. Um, so first of all, I want to say thank you, Karen. I absolutely uh, agree with everything you just said. Um, as a resident and a right here homeowner on Main Street, um, we actually regularly walk up and down the road and collect garbage that's left over from people coming to swim um, during the summer. And I think that this is just definitely another access point for them to get to the river and kind of wreak havoc on our environment. Um, I am curious, and I apologize if I missed it as I joined the call slightly late, um, but I am curious how wide the intentional, this path is going to be, um, the paths to nowhere, because it sounds like there's not a connecting point, which is, or maybe there will be, but it'll be years down the line. So um, how wide and how much space are we taking up? Because that area does flood. I've seen the river come up high and won't the gravel get washed away? So plan is a trail about four feet wide. Um, and this is, I believe it's in the 10 year, 100 year flood. So it doesn't flood very often and shouldn't be 
the, the amount of scouring when water comes up, it's coming at a slow speed and flooding. This area. Well, I, I have to say that because I walk that the street every day, every morning, that there definitely were at least twice this summer where they're most likely that was underwater because of the amount of rain we got, um, or it definitely could have been. Um, I don't go in there because it's not a path yet, but um, that river was pretty high going around that loop that comes off and kind of crosses Main Street. So, um, Jody, the area we're talking about is pretty high. It's more or less at the elevation of the parking lot to the north. So it hasn't flooded in, flood, it certainly didn't flood this year and hasn't flooded in a mm -hmm. long time. Okay, okay. So four feet wide, and then you said how far in? At 150 feet. 150 feet, okay. And uh, Jason. Uh, I, not, not, I, got, I see another Jason with a hand up. Uh, Hi, this is Jason Johnson, uh, 163 Main Street in Leeds. I'm going to butter to this project. I've lived at this address for 20 years. Uh, I've been on the Weed Civic Association for 10 years. I'm the vice president of the Weed Civic Association, and we've had many meetings with Wayne Fiden and ConCom about various conservation parcels and leads and potential extensions of trails and management and responsibility for such properties. Um, when we discussed this with Smith College um, six years ago or so, and a design decisions were made, and this was in coordination with Wayne Fiden and Ned Huntley, um, it was pretty clear that in order to safely traverse a slope of this significance to this area in the river protection zone with wetland issues, that this was going to be an extensive project. It was going to be expensive. It was going to be highly engineered in order to be safe and erosion proof essentially. Now, my property is on the 100-year floodplain, and there are four other houses on this island of the Mill River. Any erosion <laughs> that is contributed in this area has the potential to change the floodplain elevation. Minor amounts of sedimentation in the river channel along with increased flood risk and increased precipitation events, the kind that we're having with climate change and flood predictions, FEMA estimates, any erosion in this area that contributes to the channel is going to increase our flood risk. It is irresponsible to try and put in a path that is substandard to current performance standards, trail maintenance and construction, according to DCR and the state of Massachusetts. Wayne is familiar with all of this because when we were talking about paving the bike path from Middlebury Street North and suggested a non-paved source, we sent him all the information. The Mill River Greenway was not allowed alerted about this. The LCA was not alerted about this. There is no plan as far as I can see. There, I looked for a design and some sort of proposal and there is no plan. But what I'm hearing is that the part-time staffer from planning is going to create a four foot wide path up a 30 foot percent slope. And nobody's gonna commit to maintain that and there aren't other places along this one trail or somewhere in the city or existing trails and pathways to current conservation areas that can't be improved or where money would be better spent. So these are just some of the issues that I have. Okay, so I can, I can address a couple of those things. The, so the Smith College students were looking at if we were doing a bike path, not if we're just doing a walking trail. So of course it's a, you know an ADA accessible bike path. So it was certainly a, you know a much different kind of project than a walking trail. 
the area we're talking about is just 150 feet in, which is the highest area. So we're not talking about the area where it gets more sensitive, where it drops down in elevation by that little intermittent stream, or the, I don't know if it's 30%, but whatever that slope is going up. So that may have been before you got on the call, Jason, but those areas we're not doing as part of this. But, but, do you, but do you not think, Wayne, that people knowing that that path is there and going to the end of the path and looking up at the bike path going, oh, I can scramble up that, or I'm gonna go up that, or if I'm coming from the bike path the other way going, well, I'm just gonna jump down here. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense to develop this because you already have infrastructure, the bike path, which leads to Mulberry Street, which leads to Main street and to water street with both with both give you access to roberts hill there are crossing walks pedestrian improvements sidewalks that need to go in there's all sorts of infrastructure that that could be co-opted with in order to make this a more feasible you know idea and i like the idea i went to the one trail one trail meetings and I got your message about small projects that may be available for funding for grants, but this one certainly did not see, you know, it didn't even come close to being appropriate for doing something like this, mostly because we can't control the access and the problems that are associated with spur trails and unmaintained and unmanaged properties that the city owns, but can't afford to maintain or won't make the commitment to maintain. So again, you know, I am firmly against this project. My neighbors are firmly against this project. As proposed, the LCA is against this project and everybody else that I know is against this project. Thank you. So I guess we're gonna talk about all this stuff in the, in the meetings that are coming forth. Because we haven't talked about this yet and in this area, this trail, this connector, it's a dead, it's a dead idea. Considering what the last six years have brought to our neighborhood with regard to river access and the public. That's really all I have to say about it at this time. Thank you, sir. Any other comments before I ask to close the hearing? There's two I would like to speak. Oh, yes. Can okay. I go? Is that Aaron? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes, please. My name is Aaron Mahan Moore. I also live at 163 Main Street, and I would like to ask Wayne Fiden directly, what is your plan for mitigating erosion, and how willing is the city to pay for my FEMA flood insurance when we need to obtain it? So we don't see gravel at this elevation causing erosion. So we're not talking about bank scouring. We're not talking about the, the, all those things which are, you know, are a great risk, which we're very careful about. So we don't see that as being an outcome of, of gravel at this elevation. I'm asking when you have to traverse the upper part of the path, which I did, you know, recently when I saw that this notice appeared on our street. Um, so when people actually access it from the bike path, the non-gravel part, how are you going to mitigate erosion and people going off trail, which you actually encouraged earlier that people should explore and go off trail? So we haven't designed that yet because we would need to get an easement from National Grid to do that. But it would be a series of water bars and steps to stabilize the bank. There are a lot of methods we tend to use the um, AMC's trail guide, but there's other trail guides for how do you build a stable slope that's not going to have um, erosion. And, right, and but in the interim, as you lay this gravel path that's 100 feet, 150 feet in, and then are you to assume that people are going to stop at the gravel, end of the gravel, and then turn around and walk back out? I mean, I don't understand how you're planning to prohibit people from actually walking along the dirt path that's already been created and what you're going to do then to mitigate the erosion that occurs naturally by virtue of people walking on it, then walking through the brush and then walking down the slope to the river. I, I think you really hit the, the can, which is there's already an existing desire line there. People are already using it and it's causing- No, erosion. they're not. I only used it because you put a sign there and cut the brush back. I wouldn't have gone in there had I not been invited. 
I had no reason to go back there. The invitation was put when you put that sign there. There's no desire line. Okay, so you're, you're proving my point exactly that people then are going to access it and you have no plan for maintaining it. You have no plan for prohibiting them from accessing areas, sensitive areas that they should not access. And you're, you're creating another problem. And are you going to come personally pick up the trash that people leave as they access yet another part of Leeds? Well, I did come in personally and picked up, you know, probably a ton of bricks and metal and I ruined my springs doing it. So in that sense, yes. But, but <laughs> we believe that the, um, the hotel bridge is going to make, get more people coming down that hill. And so we don't want to just bury our head in the sand and, and ignore that. So I would say that you, that would be a better idea and to direct people to go along the bike path and down through the village of Leeds and encourage them to use the, the ways that already exist. As Karen Nelson expressed, as Jason Johnson expressed, as would be a smarter maneuver other than the quote unquote path to nowhere as Jody expressed. Thank you. Thank you. Now, is there, uh, I make sure I'm not missing any other hands. Uh, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to make one uh, maybe final comment. So I should have identified myself when I spoke earlier. My name is Gabby Emmerman. I'm one of the co-moderators of the Mill River Greenway Initiative. Um, we're thinking holistically about this river and community access and um, wayfinding. Um, I, I wanna make an observation that I, I think Kevin, you in some ways have already brought out, which is that the, a lot of the things that are being raised here aren't appropriate for a conservation commission. And I wanna say that the reason that that's true is that there hasn't been any other opportunity for this community to express themselves or propose alternative or think holistically about how people are using leads and its natural resources and moving through the village. So I just wanted to make that observation in terms of uh, town process. Uh, and then I also want to make an offer, which is uh, I already have a group of five senior Smith students, landscape studies minors. My colleague Reed Bertone Johnson and I um, are interested in having a special studies, which means four students times 12 hours a week for the whole fall. Um, that's a lot of free design and community outreach work. And uh, we've already reached out to LCA about uh, convening a community uh, charrette, a design process to think about uh, the greenway and wayfinding. And um, I heard Karen mentioned uh, a bike lane up Main Street. And, um, I, and I, so I wanna offer that uh, there is an opportunity to press pause and, and think holistically about these questions. And I've got the, um, students and faculty at Smith College are here at the ready to support that process. So I'm not familiar with the mechanisms of CONSCOM, but if, if there isn't any urgency on this and there's a way to continue this conversation and uh, let, let everybody have a minute to breathe and reflect and look deeply. And of course, Wayne, we would invite you and Sarah and the city into that conversation as well. I wonder whether we might be able to come up with a plan that, uh, everybody feels that they are bought into and um, that uh, charts a path forward um, where, where this conversation seems to be at loggerheads. Thanks. Thank you, Gabby. Um, I guess that leads me to, uh, as I, because I haven't been out I and mean, I've been by that place hundreds of times, but I haven't actually walked the path that is being described and realize that in terms of our charter as a country. Where'd you go? Yeah. 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 He, he froze. Hey, Kevin, if you can hear us, you're frozen. Yeah, I can't hear him either. I know he was about to drop some very good words on us too. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any chance we could text them and let them know he's, he's not speaking to anybody? He'll figure it out eventually. 
Yeah, I'll, uh, let me show you the text right here. Maybe he's back in the waiting room now. Uh, he's, he's not not yet. I uh, sent him a text. Let me see if I can reach him. Here. Uh, he said his power went out. So let me uh, let me give him the number and he'll be rejoining us shortly. While we're waiting, could could maybe the vice chair recognize me? I don't know what we do in these situations. <laughs> sure. Hi, George. How you doing? Good. Is that you, Mason? Yeah. All right. Way to step into the breach. So. Like the previous speaker, Gabby, I didn't really identify myself as uh, with the Friends of the Northampton Trails. Um, and, and I appreciate her comment about maybe just pausing for a little bit and having a, a broader conversation about this. Um, I, I really agree with Wayne that once the uh, hotel bridge is finished, it's going to become a huge draw. Um, and uh, it's, it's going to be inevitable that people will find that and they'll stop there and they'll come from all different directions. The, the trail now, as it currently goes across to the Mulberry Street Park, is a little tricky for some families, some younger kids to come back down to Main Street to go over to Water Street because of that, um, that intersection and that slope going down. I don't anticipate either that people, families will be riding down this new bypass, but they could certainly walk their bikes in some fashion down there. Um, I think families are always looking for a safe way to get about those quiet streets. Um, we would be the, the Friends of Northampton Trails would be glad to contribute to the charrette. I think we could help with some fundraising and some volunteer activity too, um, because we do, I, I know for the people of Leeds, and I lived there for 25 years myself, um, it's a jewel of a location. People are gonna come there because they wanna see the Mill River, they wanna see the history. Um, and I think the more options we give them to arrive there without a car, the better safely. So um, I hope that we can kind of get around some of these issues and build a connector that is um, both ecologically and, uh, you know, and, and transportation wise very safe. So thanks. Thank you, George. Uh, I'm back. My apologies. Our power went out. Uh, I'm in Vermont at the moment, and uh, our generator has kicked in and allowed me to get back on. What I was in the process of saying is that I realized that although I've been past this uh, area hundreds of times, I have not walked this path. And the places where, apart from the uh, graveled area that's being proposed, uh, where there are access points where there might be erosion, and I realize that I feel like I have inadequate knowledge uh, to uh, rule on whether this actually might jeopardize resource areas for which we have responsibility without um, continuing this to allow me to go look at the, at, at the place personally. Um, so I, uh, uh, picking up on what Gabby was saying, um, my, my personal interest would be to uh, slow the process down let the commission have a chance to actually visit the site. And in the meantime, see if there might be some um, uh, greater community, community involvement. I came back on as George was speaking. Seems like there are a number of avenues by which that might happen, uh, which might lead to uh, a, a way to have a successful um, use of um, these funds, Wayne, that you have available. Like I said, I, over the years, you've, 
you grab parcels when you can, you do improvements when you can, and when you have the money and when the opportunity arrives and anticipate being able to puzzle it all together at a later time. Uh, at this point, it feels to me like uh, I would personally like a, uh, to be able to visit, to have a little more sense of what the alternatives might be and how there might be a, a, a healthier uh, community process, even though that community process is not strictly speaking part of conservation um, purview. Uh, but the part that is part of conservation purview, I feel unequipped at the moment uh, to rule on. So I, I, I would suggest continuing um, the hearing um, uh, and um, not closing it at this point. I wonder if the applicant, uh, Wayne, uh, feels like that's something that you can feel comfortable with. Yeah, I mean, in terms of doing a site visit to look at it, absolutely. Um, I think we'd like to know from a permitting standpoint, you know, so we can be continuing to the next meeting so you all can look at it. That makes perfect sense. If we're pausing for a longer time period, I don't object, but given our grant period, we would just have to use the funds somewhere else because we have time clocks going forward, which doesn't mean we couldn't come back in some future grant, but we just, you know, we don't want to return the money to the states and, and not use it. Right, no, good, good to avoid returning money. You don't have to return to the state. So, but, uh, but also, Ken, I mean, that, that's not a problem. The, you can guess the needs for stabilizing trails are a lot more than the resources. So yes. it's not that we're in short supply of opportunities to spend funding somewhere else. How do uh, the rest of the commissioners feel about um, delaying this, continuing it for the time being, at least to allow us to take a, a look directly personally? I don't think I'm going to change. Oh, go ahead. I don't think it's going to change my mind. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's like half a pie, the bottom crust and innards. But uh, you're going to wait five or ten years before you put the upper crust and bake it. I mean, it, it, I, I think we could better use the money somewhere else. Good for you. Fair enough. Well, we can. Uh, Continue it till uh, the uh, first meeting in September. And by that time, uh, in between now and then, we can have a chance to look and see whether there's been uh, the beginnings of community initiatives to uh, uh, develop alternatives. And it may well be, um, as uh, Mason says, that we will decide that uh, this is problematic uh, from a conservation commission um, obligation standpoint, not from a community standpoint. As, as I said at the beginning, we, we, we have to rule on things that are within our purview. And so my interest is seeing whether in fact I can feel um, good one way or the other about denying or uh, approving uh, this uh, request. And right now I don't feel like I have enough information to do that. So would somebody uh, feel okay about making a, a motion to continue and uh, uh, we'll at least get that piece um, settled for tonight. And if somebody did, that would be September 9th at 5.30. Okay. Uh, so moved. And a second? Second. And Jason seconds. All in favor? Sarah, you need a roll call, I guess. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Mason? Uh, yes. Randy? So the same as Mason. Yes. Ken? <laughs> yes. And Jason? Yes. All right. Well, thank you all. Uh, this is the kind of conversation that I like a lot better when we're in a room together. But uh, and normally I uh, would if we were in a room together, I would have to ask people not to ask Wayne questions, but to address everything to the commission. And in some ways, Zoom made this a little more uh, easy. As a, as a series of exchanges. So it, it was uh, informative and valuable for me. So thank you all for uh, participating in it. Um, and now we'll move on to uh, the other items. We have an executive session, but first we have a request for certificate of compliance at 50 Loudville Road. Somebody here to present on that or Sarah, you're gonna summarize it? Uh, there's not, I can summarize this one. Um, so this was an application that um, unlike some of the more recent ones we've had, they go back many years. This is just from a few years ago. Um, most of the 
the work was done, the, the homeowner decided not to move forward with some of it, but everything that was done was done in complete uh, compliance with the plans. I went out and did the site visit, verified that. And part of the requirements of the order of conditions was that the, um, the homeowner was supposed to draw up a plan of a no disturb zone and have that recorded at the registry of deeds. She did draw up the plan as I passed along to you, but the registry of deeds had an issue recording it. So I suggested she just provide that to you now and we include it as an attachment in the certificate of compliance should the commission issue one. So we can uh, issue a, a certificate of compliance uh, with that as in a, a, a noted attachment that needs to be still um, uh, attached to the deed at some point? Uh, how, how Correct. You, so, okay. so anyone who looked at the certificate of compliance would then see this plan I and, see. and know okay. about it and that right. permanent condition still is in the so order. The, uh, but it the, just didn't it didn't meet the registry's requirements for a, a separate plan recording. I see. But it, okay. it seemed like this was a good But plan. our certificate of compliance will be attached to the deed so it'll be Correct. Evident. Correct. Right. So I want to, want to make a motion to uh, grant that certificate. So moved. And a second. Seconded if Mason moves. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, Sarah? Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Thank you. All right. And now we have uh, an executive session uh, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property for interests in conservation lands. And for that, we need to ask uh, non-members of the commission to uh, before depart. Before we go to that, before we go to that. Yes, maybe. Um, what about the uh, violation that we dealt with last time? Um, I don't know what the status is. Now. Sure, uh -huh. so that was, on, that was on my list. Thanks, Mason. Um, and we can, if we deal with that now, we probably will not have to come back to regular session. Uh, so the, the violation that was issued that had several steps, as I think you all remember. So the first one was uh, nominating a qualified environmental consultant who would then develop a plan for restoration, which was the second piece. That first step has already been missed. Um, I let the, the applicant uh, or the property owner of the applicant know that, that this had been missed, but I haven't heard back from him. That second deadline is coming up next week. Um, and if that one gets missed, it seems like it would be appropriate to start issuing fines at that point, should the commission agree. Um, but I'm happy to hear your, your thoughts about how to proceed with it. And there, there also were some other things going on on Riverbank Road, um, not related to conservation. The Department of Public Works went out to install some barriers on a temporary basis. Those have since disappeared. So the DPW is pursuing that separately. Um, there may have been some additional cutting that, that was going on but it didn't seem like that would warrant a, a separate enforcement order at this point. Is DEP aware of the violation? Uh, they are. Um, they're not planning to take any action separately. I haven't heard back from National Heritage, but I, I don't know what the species is in, in this particular location of the river. So it, it may be that cutting along the bank it isn't something that they're concerned with, or is that they're working on a violation on, on their own timeline. So do you need approval from us to... Uh... Uh, issue fines um, if there is not compliance in the next two weeks or so? Uh, so once that next deadline on the 25th to prepare a, and submit a restoration plan. So if, if that hasn't been complied with, to, to then start issuing fines. Do you need our approval? Yes. Now, because that's, yes. that's, a, that's a week out. Okay. Yes. Right. So if someone want to make a motion to authorize Sarah to issue fines on top of the uh, enforcement order. I'll move. And a second? Second. All in favor? Sarah? Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Thank you. And now we'd need a motion to go into executive session for the, the purposes on the agenda. So we want to make a motion um, to that effect. And making clear that we're not, not coming back to regular session. Uh-huh, okay. There are some moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Kevin? Sarah? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. 
And Jason? Yes. All right. 